Hi guys, today we're going to show you how to make a rose using these three petal cutters. So you're going to start off by rolling yourselves a, a cone. Now the average size, your, pet, your cone needs to sit inside with a little bit extra at the top of your petal shape. Once you've rolled your cone, make it a bit more pointed at the top so that your rose petals will fold better around them. Dip your wire, this is 26 gauge with a small hook on and push it about a half to three quarters into the cone and then just pinch the bottom so that it sticks on to the wire. Now you need to put this aside to dry overnight so that it can set and then the rays will stay firmly on the wire when you're doing it. So you're going to roll out your flower paste. You want it to be paper, paper thin, okay? So you can see how thin this is. And with your first size petal cutter, we're going to cut out five of the smallest petals. If you give them a little wiggle, Okay, so to start with, you're going to use two of your petals that you've cut out. Pop them onto your foam pad and you're just going to very slightly just run your ball tool just on this top edge of these two. Okay, you just want to thin it out. Okay, that's that. Okay, then you're going to take your cone, this is one that I made earlier so it's dried that I can show you. I use water um, but you can use petal glue and you need to wet about three quarters of the way up these first two petals. And then what you want to do with your first one, you put the petal on, push down. And we're going to concentrate mostly on the top of the rose. So you need to bring that first petal round, that first side, push it as close as you can. And then just roll this side over the top so you can see how tight a curl that is. Just flatten it around the base of your cone. Pop a little bit of water just in there if you need to, not too much. And then your second one, you're gonna put on the opposite side and you're gonna do exactly the same again. So bring it round tightly and then roll this side over and flatten the rest down. So this is what you start off with. Okay and it's all flattened around the base of the cone. Now ideally I would recommend that you put each stage to one side for at least half an hour to an hour to let the cone and the petals relax and dry out in between your next layer. So your next layer, you're gonna have three of the same sized petals. These ones, we're going to curl all the way round. Can you see from there all the way, right round and back again, right round and back again. 
And when you've done that, you want to just turn them over and have a little flatten there with your ball tool just to give them a little bit of a curve that they can shape to the bottom of the cone. And then you're going to, again, take your cone, which for you guys will have dried out a bit overnight, and you're going to go about halfway. Start on the side where your seam is and just pop your petal at the bottom of the rose and just push that on, okay? Now, if you want to underlap, you can, or you can just take these round the rest of the petal. So, I'll show you how we've done those. What I tend to do is just leave one side of the petal open. Put this at about halfway round, this next one, half overlapping your last petal here. And pull that back. Sorry, I'm kind of taking you off camera here. And then your third petal pop into the middle and this one you want to tuck in at both sides pull that one and then that one around and pinch it onto your rose next you want to roll out five of those same petals so still the smallest size and again, you're going to just curl the edges. So, do that to all five. Now, <clears throat> with your fifth one, once you've rolled it, or your five petals, just take your ball tool like we did before, make a little indentation on the back. And then, with these ones, just take a paintbrush or a cocktail stick, whatever you find easier, and just curl over the top sides, okay? That will then leave you like this and just give that a little pinch and just set them onto your foam pad just for five minutes to dry. Okay, so with your five petals that you've just done, we're not going to put so much water, maybe a third of the way on this pointed side of your raised petal. And you're going to start on one of the creases, okay? So just pop that give it a little push on the next one just tuck it under just let it fold back the next one tuck it under and you're only going to push at the bottom of these petals okay the next one, just overlap, and then you're left with the two, one that you started with and your last one, and your last petal just sits in side these two, and then pull them up. You can turn it upside down just to give these a pinch on, give them a bit more strength. If you find that your petals are falling away and you need a bit more water, that's fine. Just pop some on, but just making sure that it's pinched on to the bottom. Then I've got one there that keeps falling away, so I'm going to pop a little bit of water inside there. 
just a tiny bit just to do that okay okay the next step is to roll out seven petals of the middle size again keep your flower paste as thin as you can so seven petals and curl them fold over and pinch the tops like I showed you before okay so we're on to our seven petals of the middle size and I'm just finishing off the last one ready and um, you might notice I'm chasing the flower paste around my pad it is important not to hold on to it and to let it move otherwise it's going to tear so the last one we're just going to roll in those top sides and let them sit on the pad do our little indent there and just put those to one side just again for a couple of minutes just so they retain their shape once they've been done what you're going to do is roll out your flower paste and you need nine of these big petals okay these are going to give you the the nice huge open rows that would be a statement for the side or just the top of a cake so nine so you've gone one two five seven nine okay i would even though i'm saying nine i would roll out ten because you may need another one dependent on your placement you may not but it's better to have too many than not enough so our seven petals they've been sat there five minutes or so to dry off so again the water just put it about a quarter of the way just on the sides there of each petal and then we're going to put these on around the rows exactly the same way that we did the others so we'll take the first one start off always on a crease so just in there pull the side back tuck that one in pull that side back it <laughs> tuck that one in pull it back round if you can just rest it on your fingers as you do each one it makes it a bit easier for handling so we're almost there these ones you're kind of putting them halfway under each petal that you do so you're tucking it in about halfway across pull that one up leave that one and then this last one again just slot that in between the two fold it up fold it up now when you've done that you can see already you're getting quite a beautiful shape here of the rose okay so just pitch it up have a little look see how it's looking to you you can pull some petals back have some closer but it's actually starting to look really quite beautiful if you just turn it upside down now you can hang this if you have a hanger or just sit it on some onto your soft foam pad then it won't take the shape away now you're going to put that to one side because next we're going to roll out the 10 of these largest size okay so we've cut out 10 of the largest size and we're going to again just curl these from the top down to the bottom now these ones are going to be a bit different okay you're going to roll your shoulders as you did before 
dentist on the top. Uh, I actually I do it with my fingers purely because I find it less fiddly. This time we're going to sit them onto one of these proformer pads. If you just pop them in there and cup them in, it just gives them a nice shape. So you're going to do that with all 10 of the largest size petals. Now once you've got all 10 rolled out and sitting in your proforma, go and have a cup of tea or make a cup of tea and leave these for at least 15 minutes. You want them to be pliable but not hard um, and not too soft. So 10-15 minutes is perfect for these. These have now dried out enough to be able to hold the shape. So you're just going to pop a bit of water in that indentation on all of the petals. Okay, so just don't need a lot, just enough to make them a bit tacky. Okay, then you're going to take your rose just like before, take a petal, go to a seam and just push it on. And the next one, tuck under, push it on. So just as we did with the other petals all the way around. Now you might not need the 10, you might only need nine, but at least you've got them made and ready to go okay so just pop them on all right so all ten petals on and around your rose and with these petals you might want to just turn your flower upside down give it a small push just to make sure they're on and then if you turn it over how beautiful is that stunning beautiful falling open flower. Now you can sit this into a flower former to dry or you can pop it onto the pro former pad it will hold it in shape or into a glass if you don't have anything else it will do exactly the same job. Okay so our rose has dried off and we're now going to give it some paint I've got in my palette here some vodka and just one drop of a baby pink base colour. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a swirl. I want this just to have a tint of pink. I don't want it to be too much, okay? So I'm going to start in the middle and just, if you can see, just pop that around okay now there isn't too much danger with this becoming too soggy because vodka will dry really very quickly so just paint it on goes on a little bit i don't know like a watercolor i suppose but you just want minimum of color in there otherwise it becomes very dark very dismal looking flower so we're just going to paint it round you can see how that's come in you don't have to use vodka, you can just use a base colour as it is, but it will be a lot darker and it will also take quite some time to dry. Now, if you just pop it at the top of the petals, it will run down because of the vodka and then it will just flood and fill in any bits that you might miss with the brush. 
So your important part is to make sure that you get all of the outside of the petals and that there's no kind of drops of paint sitting. Okay. So I'm going to finish painting this and then I'll come back and show you how it looks. But as I say, just dip your brush in. Don't be afraid of it and let it flood down as if you were painting a normal picture. Now, as you come to your outer petals, you need to be scraping your paint off quite a lot because they're going to be lighter than the inner ones. So you've barely any on your brush, just enough to coat that will give it a bit of depth and a bit more texture and then you'll need to set this to dry again once you've done it, let the vodka set and the leaves dry again. Now they won't get very wet because the vodka dries so quickly, but they obviously will get a little. Okay. Kind of almost gives it a porcelain effect when it's so light. Absolutely beautiful. It's only one drop of the pink that I have in with the vodka. So that it's just a very, very faint colour on the outside. Do try and turn it round as you do it because then that will also show you pieces that you've missed that you perhaps thought you'd got. Um especially the little bits on the edges and underneath. Okay, so you finish off. Now I like to just accentuate the edges of my rose once I've painted it. Now the way I do that is I literally just have one drop of neat beige base pink. I put a tiny piece on my brush and then I just sweep it towards me on the edges of each petal. And it just gives it a little highlight really but you don't have to do that that's just my preference and as I said I don't actually paint that on I just scoop the edges and it just gives those edges a bit of life also because the vodka and the other paint is still a little bit wet, it bleeds slightly and it gives it a little bit of a more realistic look. fairly quick and not too difficult to do it's just making sure that you get all of your edges and as I say you don't have to do this this is my own preference just little bits
especially if you are doing this in you know like a, a large um, top posy or a cascade down the cake this will just allow the rows to stand out a little bit more if you've got other flowers all of a similar colour which obviously very often happens with wedding cakes birthday cakes people have colour themes almost done now concentration <laughs> Using a petal there, which I will glue shortly. I think that's it. So there you have it, a large open rose, looking stunning. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Um, if you have a go at making your own roses, please place them in the comments below. Tell your friends about me and I'll post again very, very soon. Now I like to just accentuate the edges of my rose once I've painted it. Now the way I do that is I literally just have one drop of neat base pink. I put a tiny piece on my brush and then I just sweep it towards me on the edges of each petal. And it just gives it a little highlight really but you don't have to do that that's just my preference and as I said I don't actually paint that on I just scoop the edges and it just gives those edges a bit of life also because the vodka in the other paint is still a little bit wet, it bleeds slightly and it gives it a little bit of a more realistic look. fairly quick and not too difficult to do it's just making sure that you get all of your edges and as I say you don't have to do this this is my own preference just little bits Especially if you are doing this in, you know, like a, a large um, top posy or a cascade down the cake. This will just allow the rose to stand out a little bit more. If you've got other flowers all of a similar colour. 
which obviously very often happens with wedding cakes, birthday cakes, people have colour themes. Almost done now. Concentration. <laughs> Using a petal there, which I will glue shortly. I think that's it. So there you have it, a large open rose, looking stunning. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Um, if you have a go at making your own roses, please place them in the comments below. Tell your friends about me and I'll post again very, very soon.